Hi, I'm Sarah Stokey with Stoked on Mushing. I wanted to talk about sled dog diets and the metabolic shift that undergoes during long distance racing in sled dogs. The reason I wanted to do this is because I just saw the video of Martin Boozer coming into Manly and declaring his 24 hour layover. I was actually a little surprised to see that he wanted to take his 24 hour this early on in the race, but it should be noted that just because you declare a layover, it doesn't mean you're actually obligated to take it. He can actually decide to leave at any point. So perhaps this was meant as a potential I don't know, a bluff to his competition, but again, kind of early to start playing head games. So who knows? Martin's been in the race for a long time. So, you know, whatever he does or whatever he's planning on doing, he obviously has a strategy in mind. So we'll just have to wait to see it play out. Now, what I wanted to talk about with sled dogs and their diets uh, was in particular what we call the metabolic shift that occurs in endurance racing huskies. So our sled dogs are pretty special endurance athletes. They actually undergo this really neat phenomena when they are racing that essentially allows their metabolism to, to almost run as if they were resting. This is pretty unique uh, and what I mean by that is um, there were a number of studies done. Um, one of the more notable studies was by Michael Davis. He kind of is a canine athletic science researcher and one of the studies that he, he has done in the past and kind of one of the more notable studies was that he took a group of racing huskies, you know, obviously working with top mushers. I think Martin may have even been involved in that study. I, I don't actually know though. Um, they don't site, you know, which mushers they work with or whatnot, but I know he is at the forefront of a lot of that, um, was that he essentially put on a mock dog sled race where he had groups of huskies run for a hundred miles a day. And after that hundred miles, he took blood samples as well as muscle samples. And so he was measuring for certain things and what he really wanted to see was how their metabolisms work. And what he discovered was that during the first few days of endurance racing, sled dogs draw energy from their glycogen stores in their muscles, just like any other athlete out there. Notable though, was that a few days into the race, there was this shift that occurred. And what he then saw was that sled dogs actually stopped uh, getting energy from their glycogen stores and actually started drawing on uh, the glycogen and fat that was directly in their bloodstream. Now he hypothesized this was from uh, the diets of the sled dogs. So our sled dogs consume about 13,000 calories a day. 60% of that is in the form of fat. Uh, the remaining 40% is in carbohydrates, proteins, uh, etc. But so a huge percentage of what our dogs are eating is actually straight fat and they're able to metabolize that directly into energy. How awesome is that? That like makes them super efficient athletes. Uh, what is notable to me about that and uh, in regards to Martin's decision is it takes a few days for this to occur. It doesn't just uh, happen, you know, it's not like they run 100 miles and it occurs. It takes about 200, 300 plus miles. Um, generally, that's why we see mushers taking their 24 kind of right around the 300 mile mark. Uh, that's really when that shift sort of sets in. So what it means is if you take this uh, layover, theoretically, you know, somewhere right around when that shift is occurring, one, you know, your dogs are getting refueled directly from the fat they are consuming in their diet over the 24 hour layover. Um, generally speaking, mushers get four to five really solid meals in their dogs during the 24. And it also means they're able to replenish those glycogen stores because they're, um, they're not really being used. So it's kind of um, an important distinction, I think, in terms of maintaining your team at kind of the top level of athleticism. Now, that being said, there are ways to stimulate uh, getting that shift to occur much earlier in the race. You could go on long runs uh, right before the race. You know, Martin may have gone on a long run on Friday and on Sunday um, or, you know, Saturday after the ceremonial start and, and on Sunday. I don't know. Um, his decision to take the 24-hour may have nothing to do 
with his dogs too. Maybe there's something, you know, he's dealing with. Maybe he's not feeling well or there's something else going on. Or maybe it is entirely to do with something he's seeing in his dogs that he didn't discuss on uh, the insider video. It's really hard to say, but super interesting. Uh, it's really interesting to see kind of how teams are starting to kind of shake out and spread out along the trail. And it'll be really interesting over the next kind of 24 hours to see where people are resting and where at, at times they're choosing not to rest. So thanks for tuning in and have a great day.